In an inner city park, thousands gathered to light the way home for women in honour of a young comedian who didn't make it there. A talented young comedian who never made it home after a performance in the city. It could have been anyone, she was just walking home from work. We're all just asking for change at the end of the day. The 22-year-old had no idea as she walked across Prince's Park in Carlton North. James Todd attacked her from behind, living out his homicidal rape fantasy. On a quiet night in Melbourne, Eurydice Dixon, a rising star in the comedy scene, was walking home after a successful performance. Little did she know, a predator was stalking her every move. In this gripping true crime documentary, we uncover the tragic events that led to her untimely death in Prince's Park. Who was James Todd, the man behind this heinous crime? What drove him to commit such a brutal act? For destroying the life of an innocent woman, James Todd will spend the rest of his days rotting in a jail cell. What I'd wish for James Todd, and what I believe Eurydice would wish, is that he gets better. Join us as we explore the investigation that brought him to justice, the courtroom drama, and the profound impact on Eurydice's family, friends, and the entire nation. This is not just a story of loss, but a powerful call to action for a safer world. Stay tuned as we delve deep into the life and legacy of Eurydice Dixon, a young woman whose light was extinguished too soon. Melbourne, Australia is a lively and dynamic city known for its iconic landmarks and rich cultural scene. It's home to about 5 million residents, including Eurydice Dixon. Eurydice Jane Dixon, born November 10, 1995, was known for her bravery, determination, and intelligence. She was kind-hearted and deeply loved the arts, although her life was not without its challenges. At the tender age of seven, Eurydice faced a devastating tragedy. Her mother, who had grappled with a heroin addiction, succumbed to an overdose and passed away in a shopping center. Despite this profound loss, Eurydice maintained a close bond with her family, her brother Christopher, sister Polly, and her father Jeremy. Eurydice, a natural on stage, quickly carved out a niche in stand-up comedy, becoming a distinctive and influential voice in the comedy world. Though initially introverted, she gradually emerged from her shell, infusing her wit and intellect into her performances to share her experiences. A dedicated feminist, she skillfully blended self-deprecating humor with sharp commentary on social issues, creating a unique and compelling act. She was a steadfast ally to fellow comedians, earning the title of a comic's best friend. Her knack for humor shone through even when jokes fell flat. Frequenting comedy clubs, she rapidly carved out a reputation in Melbourne's vibrant comedy landscape. On Tuesday, June 12, 2018, Eurydice graced the stage at the Highlander Bar, a frequent haunt of hers, to debut some fresh tracks. Her performance was spectacular, leaving her delighted by the audience's enthusiastic response. Once her set concluded, she exited the club and accompanied her boyfriend Tony to his tram stop before starting her journey homeward. She frequently took this stroll. Upon reaching Prince's Park, she slipped off her shoes and wandered barefoot from one end to the other. The park enchanted her, and she cherished this ritual on every visit. Only a few hundred meters from her doorstep, she messaged her boyfriend Tony at 12.02 a.m. on Wednesday the 13th. The message conveyed, I'm almost home safe, how about you? She traversed two football fields before entering the third, nearly returning to her shared residence with her father and brother. In the early morning hours of 2.40 a.m., a late night commuter stumbled upon a grim scene. There, in the fields of Prince's Park Sporting Precinct, lay a lifeless body. Acting swiftly, he dialed emergency services and began administering CPR. An ambulance was soon en route. Despite the paramedics' determined attempts, they couldn't bring her back, and Eurydice Dixon was declared dead on the spot. The scene was secured, and a murder investigation commenced. Detective Inspector Andrew Stamper urged anyone present between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. to step forward as they might hold critical information. The authorities urged those with dash cams or CCTV to review their recordings as any detail might help clarify the incident. As the probe progressed, an autopsy would soon uncover the cause of Eurydice's demise. She had succumbed to asphyxiation and neck compression. She endured severe blunt force trauma to her body and head and had been sexually assaulted. 
The perpetrator was undoubtedly a dangerous criminal who urgently needed to be apprehended. We advised individuals to be conscious of their security. Many argued that the police's warnings put a burden on the victims, and they were met with criticism. Premier Daniel Andrews of Victoria also took issue with the police's reaction, claiming that the woman was responsible, atching for herself, and following all the expected procedures. There's a deep sense of shock and sadness at what happened here earlier in the week. Behind me, a collection of floral tributes has been growing. Friends have remembered Eurydice Dixon as clever, funny, and beautiful. There's been an outpouring of emotion on social media and criticism of the police advice for people to be mindful of their safety. Some have described that as victim shaming. Victoria Chief Commissioner Graham Ashton later apologized, clarifying that their message was never meant to imply victim blaming. They quickly spotted a conspicuous figure while reviewing the CCTV footage of her walk home. A young man appeared in the video, trailing her closely. Recognizing this as their most promising lead, they released his image to the media, hoping someone might identify him or he would step forward on his own. Then, on Wednesday evening, a young man named James Todd strolled into the police station in Broadmeadows. James Todd, just 19, caught the police's attention when surveillance footage showed him trailing Eurydice. When questioned, he explained that he had started following her because she seemed intoxicated. He said, look at this drunk idiot. Might as well see if she does anything funny. Contrary to popular belief, an autopsy confirmed that Eurydice had no drugs or alcohol in her system. James described the night as a hazy memory. He sported a collection of scratches on his face, claiming they were courtesy of his cat. However, the police remained skeptical. After over 600 questions and continuous denials of any wrongdoing, the police sought to collect his DNA and other forensic evidence. His DNA wouldn't have been found there had he not been implicated. That revelation led him to alter his narrative. Don't worry about the DNA, I did it, I will tell you everything, he said. The real story of James Todd and the events that transpired would eventually be unveiled. In Melbourne, they gathered some 10,000 men, women, children, united in sombre silence. The crowds that filled Prince's Park to remember Eurydice Dixon a jarring contrast to its emptiness the night the 22-year-old was killed there, walking home from her comedy gig. As word spread about the tragic event, tributes for Eurydice poured in across social media. Comedians shared heartfelt messages and contributed to fundraising efforts for her family. The Highlander Bar, where she delivered her final performance, honored her memory. She was a remarkable, talented, kind, unique, and universally loved person, and the entire staff are shattered and heartbroken. Across the nation, thousands gathered in vigils, uniting people from every background to express their outrage and honor her memory. Thousands of people have gathered in Melbourne for a vigil in honour of an inspiring comedian who was raped and murdered last week. Tonight, those who knew her have come together with strangers to pay tribute to the 22-year-old's life and to reclaim the park. A sea of faces lit by candlelight as raw emotions surfaced. In a poignant moment at a Canberra vigil, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull stood beside opposition leader Bill Shorten and remarked, this young woman should have been able to walk across the park in her city as safely as she could walk across a room in her home or any public space. Bill Shorten remarked, The vigil to me is a commitment to every other Australian woman that you ought to be safe, and nothing less than that is acceptable. Almost 10,000 people gathered at the Melbourne Park for a solemn vigil before the park's lights were dimmed at 6 p.m., leaving the space illuminated by candlelight. Many in attendance had also participated in protests and vigils following the tragic murder of a woman in 2012 who was killed by a stranger while walking home. Premier Daniel Andrews described Eurydice's murder as a senseless, thoughtless, and evil act, lamenting the tragic waste of life. As the vigil drew to a close, with his wife Catherine by his side, a choir serenaded the crowd with Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, wrapping the evening in poignant harmony.
When morning broke on Monday, locals were horrified to discover that lewd images had damaged Eurydice's memorial. The egregious defacement of a monument infuriated them. Low, it's lower than low. It's the absolute pits. It's absolutely disgusting. It should just be left out to dry. Victoria Police Chief Commissioner Graham Ashton expressed his horror and vowed to ensure that those responsible would face justice. As the nation's grief and anger swelled, landmarks across Australia, including Melbourne's Town Hall, glowed with orange lights, the United Nations symbol for the mission to end violence against women and girls. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull also addressed the tragic murder of Eurydice in Parliament, underscoring the collective mourning and resolve for change. Our hearts go out to Eurydice's family. Our prayers, our sympathy, our love are with them as they grieve her loss. Women must be safe everywhere, on the street, walking through a park, in their homes, at work. We need to ensure that we have a culture of respect for women. As James Todd sat in the Broadmeadows police station, the grim reality of his actions that day and the harrowing final moments of Eurydice were finally unveiled. On the fateful day Eurydice was killed, he wrapped up his hospitality classes around 3 p.m. He boarded a train with three classmates heading into the city. An attempt to buy alcohol at Liquorland was thwarted due to lack of ID, so he ventured to another store, emerging with vodka and cigarette rolling papers. He and his friends headed to Batman Park, where they indulged in drinks until one friend decided to call it a night. After the vodka was gone, James bought some cider and some marijuana from guys in the park. By 8.30 p.m., they found themselves at Southern Cross Station, where Todd picked up some whiskey. So the two of them got on a train headed toward Broadmeadows. Along the way, one guy hopped off at Flinders Street, while James Todd rode a bit further and got off at the Newmarket stop. He picked up some smokes there and then decided to head back downtown. James arrived back at Flinders Street Station around 10.25 that night. From there, he strolled off towards Elizabeth Street. By about 10.43 p.m., James had walked past the Woolworths, where Eurydice was hanging out with her friend Tony. James kept going until he reached McDonald's, where he grabbed a bite. After finishing his food, he returned to the corner of Swanston and Flinders Streets. He saw Eurydice saying goodbye to Tony as he boarded his tram there. James Todd lingered outside the Yongan Jackson Hotel before returning to the station. There, he noticed Eurydice strolling alone. He let her pass by at 11.08 p.m., then stealthily began trailing her, ensuring he remained unseen and out of her sight, ducking behind objects and adjusting his pace to match hers. She was ambushed after slipping off her shoes and strolling through the park. He had crept up from behind, seizing her by the dress and hair before toppling her. Eurydice resisted fiercely, clawing at his face with all her might, yet he ultimately overpowered her. After assaulting her, he confessed to choking her for about five to ten minutes. With her lifeless body left in the park, he spent ten minutes using her phone's front-facing camera to examine the scratches on his face. He then proceeded to Royal Park Station, where he dozed off on a bench at 2.14 a.m., by 3.55 a.m., he was back in Prince's Park, where he defiled one of the pathways. He strolled back to the spot where her body lay, only to be ordered away by the police present. By 5.50 a.m., he boarded a train headed home. At 6.37 a.m., he was in his bedroom, iPad in hand, frantically searching for news on Prince's Park and reading about the discovery of a woman's body there earlier that morning. He proceeded to search the internet for material on rape and strangulation. At 6.34 p.m., his phone rang. It was a friend informing him that his face had appeared on the news. He was the individual the police sought for questioning. He looked up the local police station's number and called to confirm he was the person in the photo released. Accompanied by his girlfriend and her mother, he went to the station where his mother awaited. Reassuring his girlfriend, he told her she had nothing to fear. Following his confession, he informed the officers that she appeared disoriented and defenseless. Consequently, James Todd faced charges for the rape and murder of Eurydice Dixon. From the prison phone, he reached out to his father, expressing his dismay over how Eurydice's murder unfolded. He confessed to feeling awful afterward and hoped for a more satisfactory outcome next time. But who was this young man sitting before them? As the police delved into his past, they unearthed a series of alarming revelations. He was the second of three brothers, growing up in a home marred by neglect and filth. 
The kitchen floor had decayed to collapse, the toilet was clogged, and every room overflowed with garbage and debris. The home was shared with numerous animals. His mother, struggling with depression, was questioned whether this contributed to the home's neglected state, to which he replied, it had always been that way. Diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, young James Todd displayed repetitive behaviors and an intense fixation on specific interests, like dinosaurs. By the age of 12, his school had referred him to mental health services due to rising concerns about his emotional well-being and social interactions. As he entered his teenage years, he received treatment aimed at helping him manage his mood, particularly his anger. Gradually, he distanced himself from home and began spending his nights on the streets. He proposed to his girlfriend that he move in and spend weekends at her place. During his custody, Todd was diagnosed with sexual sadism disorder. Professor James Ogloff, a seasoned forensic psychologist with over 35 years of expertise, has extensively studied pedophiles, murderers, and rapists. In subsequent discussions, he examined James Todd and provided insights to The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald about sexual sadism disorder. He explained that the disorder's origins remain primarily mysterious, though its occurrence is rare. He remarked, The reasons behind this phenomenon elude us, yet it's evident that individuals like him derive sexual gratification from causing pain and, ultimately, taking lives. This isn't fueled by misogyny, but by a specific sexual predilection. People seek straightforward explanations, but, unfortunately, no easy solutions exist. Examining James Todd's search history uncovered that he had sought out films, content depicting fatal sexual acts. From about age 11, he had delved into progressively more violent posterisk and nurtured a dark fantasy of ra asterisk and then murder woman. Eurydice Dixon's farewell took place on Thursday, June 28th. Loved ones, including her uncle, sister, and former drama teacher, shared heartfelt tributes. Johnny Cash's We'll Meet Again and The Cure's Pictures of You filled the air. According to her friend, Kieran Butler, she possessed the analytical prowess of a lawyer, capable of dissecting any issue or idea from completely contrasting perspectives. She had the rare ability to empathize with perspectives and actions she passionately opposed deeply. The emotional ceremony paid a heartfelt tribute to Eurydice. Meanwhile, the police were closing in on the individual responsible for defacing her memorial. An anti-feminist vandal who defaced the memorial site to murdered comedian Eurydice Dixon has avoided jail. Andrew Nolch was slammed for his lack of remorse by the magistrate after he blamed his actions on man-haters. Dougal Beatty was in court. Walking free from court, Andrew Nolch was showing little sign of contrition. Not all men are bad. I did the political graffiti because the mainstream media and feminists turned the tragic murder of Eurydice Dixon into one giant political man-hating event. Convicted to serve 200 hours community work, the 29-year-old pleaded guilty to painting a vulgar image of male genitalia on the memorial to Eurydice Dixon just days after she was killed in June. Andrew Nolch will now have to undergo a men's behaviour change program as part of his rehabilitation and treatment. The magistrate also ordered him to provide a DNA sample because she felt it was in the public interest. After skipping five shifts and violating his bail terms by travelling overseas, he received a five-month prison sentence. On Thursday, the 14th of June, James Todd stood before Melbourne Magistrates Court. His lawyer argued for anonymity to allow more time to gather details about his autism spectrum disorder diagnosis. His lawyer contended that revealing his identity might endanger him in custody and complicate obtaining credible witness testimonies due to the high profile of the case. The magistrate ruled that only Todd's face would be shielded from publication. No bail request was submitted and he was held in custody. This was the 8th of November, 2018. Despite previously denying any involvement in the murder of Eurydice Dixon, this afternoon, 19-year-old James Todd pleaded guilty to four charges, murder, rape, attempted rape, and sexual assault. Psychologists testified about his sexual sadism disorder before the court. Speaking for the defense, Dr. David Thomas warned that Todd was highly likely to re-offend. During assessment interviews, Todd confessed that the moment he entered the park, he was confident a sexual assault would occur. He confessed that he was uncertain about strangling her until the moment he began his assault. 
The court was informed that with a previous consensual partner, he had engaged in strangulation during sex, but had ceased immediately upon her request. Dr. Thomas said, this happened very early on in the relationship. There's no evidence at all that he was at that point consuming the kind of pornography that he consumed in the months leading up to the offense. Senior Crown Prosecutor Dr. Nanette Rogers pointed out that his actions indicated an awareness of the potential harm caused by choking. Meanwhile, his defense barrister, Tim Marsh, argued that the intent to kill Eurydice only formed during the assault. Despite being raised in a troubled environment, James Todd's girlfriend and female friends testified to his consistent kindness and respect towards women. His girlfriend added, I've found James to be a very normal person. He seemed to always be quite happy and really good socially. Another friend described James as a social butterfly, effortlessly conversing with strangers. They often sought his counsel, and he was known for his sincere apologies when he erred. Dr. Thomas and Dr. Ogloff had differing views on James Todd's remorse. According to Dr. Thomas, Todd began to grasp the extent of his actions once detained. In contrast, Dr. Ogloff noted Todd's deeply troubling actions post-murder, including searching for rape-related content online and revisiting the crime scene. Todd admitted to Ogloff that he felt nothing at all. The judge will consider a life sentence for the man who has pleaded guilty to murdering aspiring comedian Eurydice Dixon as James Todd's plea hearing enters its second day. As James Todd's plea hearing stretches into its second day, the judge deliberates a life sentence for the man who admitted to the murder of rising comedian Eurydice Dixon. Addressing the court, Eurydice's sister Polly revealed the profound impact of the crime, describing how her family has been shattered and devastated. She shared her ongoing struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder and expressed deep anger over the horrific act. Tony, Eurydice's boyfriend, confessed that his perception of humanity had been forever altered. When determining the sentence, Victorian Supreme Court Justice Stephen Kay considered Professor Ogloff's testimony for the Crown. Despite James Todd's youth, Ogloff indicated that Todd's prospects for rehabilitation were slim. The evidence suggested that his sexual sadism disorder was unlikely to be effectively treated. She was vulnerable and in the circumstances defenseless. In a most callous and cowardly manner, he set upon her the sheer terror which Eurydice must have experienced during those dreadful moments is unimaginable. The offending by you was totally and categorically evil. Your conduct and your intentions and motivation struck at the very heart of the most basic values of a decent, civilized society. During his two-hour sentencing, Justice Kay described Todd's actions as utterly twisted and depraved, labeling them as unequivocally wicked, cowardly, and sadistic. He also noted Todd's upbringing, highlighting the severe neglect and squalor in which he was raised as a mitigating factor. A video presented to the court showcased a tour of the house where he had resided, and Dr. Thomas remarked that it was one of the most extreme living conditions he had encountered in his career. The judge stated that releasing James Todd would pose a significant danger to the public. For destroying the life of an innocent woman, James Todd will spend the rest of his days rotting in a jail cell. The man who raped and murdered Melbourne woman Eurydice Dixon has been sentenced to life in jail. Twenty -year -old Todd James showed Todd. no emotion as the sentence was handed down, life imprisonment with a non-parole period of 35 years. In addition, he received a two-year sentence for sexual assault, an 11-year term for rape, and seven years for attempted rape, all to be served at the same time. After the verdict was delivered, Jeremy Eurydice's father addressed the reporters outside. I am very glad there's a killer off the streets. Uh, what I'd wish for James Todd, and what I believe Eurydice would wish, is that he gets better. Uh, and comes to a full realisation, yeah, and realises what he's done. I, I extend my sympathy, my sincere sympathy for those who love him. Uh, it's a terrible tragedy all around. Uh, Eurydice herself uh, should be remembered, as her friends will remember her, for her wit and her courage and uh, for her kindness, not, not, not for her death. James Todd appealed the punishment handed down to him. 
After weighing the relevant sentencing considerations, life imprisonment with a non-parole period of 35 years was within the range of options available to the sentencing judge. We have described the applicant's conduct as unspeakably loathsome and cruel in our written reasons. The sentence of life imprisonment was not disproportionate and was not imposed purely for the purposes of community protection. Given the applicant's limited rehabilitation prospects and the seriousness of the offending, it was open to the sentencing judge to fix a non-parole period of 35 years. After her passing, the state government introduced new scholarships to honor her legacy and support emerging female stand-up comedians. The announcement came just before the opening of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Eurydice's father, Jeremy, and her siblings, Christopher and Polly, expressed their gratitude in a heartfelt way. They extended their thanks to everyone who offered condolences and stood in solidarity, reflecting Eurydice's deep-seated concerns about violence against women. In the words of festival director Susan Proven, the inaugural recipients of the stand-up. Grants are bold, funny women, strongly committed to their comedy careers and motivated by their authentic and joyful passion for comedy. The stand-up grant is inspired by the promise and ambition of Eurydice Dixon, a much-loved emerging comedian whose friends remember her as brilliant, brave, and beautiful, unafraid to delve into challenging material and with a big, bold laugh that filled a room. Thank you for watching and taking the time to learn about Eurydice Dixon's story. Her tragic death is a stark reminder of the ongoing issues of violence against women and the urgent need for change. Let's honor Eurydice's memory by continuing the conversation, supporting efforts to make our community safer, and standing against all forms of violence. If you found this video meaningful, please like, share, and subscribe to help spread awareness. Together, we can work towards a world where everyone feels safe. Until next time, stay informed and stay safe.